Hello guys, welcome to Engineers Academy. Do subscribe my channel if you haven't done it yet. Now we are going to solve this problem from Vector Mechanics by Bear and Johnston. And the problem says that knowing that angle alpha equals to 40 degree, determine the resultant of the three forces shown. So the, the both the problems are same, just the angle alpha value changes. So I will solve one of them and then that will enable you to solve the the next problem right so i will solve this problem for alpha equals to 40 degree so now we have to find the resultant of these three forces on this block which is resting on this inclined surface and the inclined surface is making 20 degree with the horizontal so now uh, i will resolve these uh, three forces one by one uh, into their components before going to resolve these three forces we will consider um, the coordinate system we need to define our coordinate system so up the incline is up the incline is our positive x-axis this is my positive x-axis so up the incline is our positive x-axis and perpendicular to the incline surface is our positive y-axis so this is my positive y-axis so now considering this 60 pound force there is no need to resolve the 60 pound forces uh, this is already acting in the x direction so we can say that the 60 pound force has only one component and that is in the x direction right 60 pound force is itself acting in the x direction so there is no need to resolve the 60 pound force so 60 pound force is acting in the positive x direction and that is 60 pounds and its y component is zero since it's uh, it is only acting in the x direction now the next force is the 80 pound force so now as we can see that 80 pound force is making angle alpha with the x axis with the positive x axis so this 80 pound force will have the x component in this direction and it will have the y component in the positive y direction so the x component is attached to the angle alpha so the x component is the uh, cos component and the y component is the sine component since it is uh, in the opposite direction to the angle alpha and as we can see that the x component of 80 pound force is in the positive x and the y component is also along the positive y direction so we, we can write that the x component is the cos component so that will be 80 cos of angle alpha and it is in the positive x and the y component is also in the positive y and it is the sine component so that is 80 sine of alpha and for the for this particular problem the alpha value is 40 so we will plug in the 40 degree in this alpha angle similarly uh, we will consider this 120 pound force so 120 pound force is acting like this and it is again making angle alpha with the positive y axis so again uh, this 120 pound force will have x component in the positive x and it will have y component in the negative y direction so now as we can see that the x component is in front of the angle alpha so this is the sine component and the y component is adjacent to the angle so this is the cos component and the y component is in the negative y direction so we will write that the 120 pound force its y component is in the negative y and that is the cos component so you write 120 cos of alpha and its x component is in the positive x and that is the sine component so 120 sine of alpha now to find the resultant we need to find our x component the resultant um, the component of the resultant in the x so that will be equal to the sum of these uh, x components and our y will be equal to the sum of these y components so now the our x will be equal to 60 pound plus 80 cos of alpha alpha is 40 plus 120 sine of alpha again 40 this gives me 198 the our x component of the resultant is 198.42 pounds remember that all these components are in pounds and similarly uh, we will eat the y components so y component is 80 sine of 40 
minus 120 cos of 40. So this gives me our y component equals to minus 40.50 pounds. So now we know uh, the r x and r y component. Let me draw those r x and r y. So the r x is in the positive x. So the r x is in the positive x like this. And the r y is in the negative y. So the r y is going to act like this. And the lengths of the r x and r y depends on their magnitude. So r x is 198.42 and r y is 40.50. So one the the length of the r x should be greater than r y. This is just approximate lengths. Now the sum of the this the sum of the r x plus r y must give us the resultant. So the resultant must act in this direction somehow. So this is our resultant. And now to find the magnitude of this resultant, we, we need to consider this Rx plus Ry. We need to consider this right angle triangle and we can always apply the Pythagoras theorem. So we can say that R square is equal to Rx square plus Ry square and taking the square root on both sides of equation, we will get R equals to Rx square plus r y square under the square root now r x is 198.42 square plus minus 40.50 square so squaring the negative value will, will become positive so so the resultant magnitude is 198.42 square plus 40.550 square this gives me the resultant magnitude the resultant magnitude is 202.51 pounds and now we need to find the resultant um, magnitude as well so i need to draw the r x the r y component here this is my r y this is my r x this is r x this is r y and the sum of both of these is the resultant now we need to find the angle of the resultant with the positive x axis. So the angle of the resultant is let's say angle theta. So we can find this angle theta using this right angle triangle by applying tan theta. So tan theta will be the perpendicular divided by the base. So tan theta is the perpendicular. Now the perpendicular is Ry and the base is Rx. And theta will be equal to tan inverse r y is magnitude is 40.50 and our x magnitude is uh, 198.42 so 10 inverse 40.50 divided by 198.42 and this gives me the, the angle equals to 11.54 so theta is equal to 11.54 Point five four degrees. Now the resultant magnitude is 202.51 pounds and 11.54 degrees when the x-axis is parallel to the inclined surface. Now if someone asks us that what will be the angle of the resultant uh, with the horizontal not with the inclined surface and then what will be the rx and ry components and then what will be the magnitude of the resultant. So now, uh, now we need to draw another diagram. Let's say that this is my inclined surface. And let's say that this is my horizontal line. Let's say this is our new x dash. This is our previous x positive x axis. This is our positive x dash axis. This is the horizontal line. This line is the inclined surface. It is making 20 degrees. This is given. Now we have determined that the resultant is making 11.54 degrees uh, with this positive x-axis in the clockwise direction. So this means that we need to move uh, or, or we can say that um, the resultant is acting somewhere here like this. Let me do it some other way. Let's say that this is our resultant vector. So this resultant vector is making 
uh, 11.54 degree angle with this positive x-axis in the clockwise direction so this means that we need to move this resultant in the clockwise direction how much 11.54 degrees so now 11.54 degrees is obviously less than this 20 degrees so this resultant will be in between both of these axes so the resultant is somewhere here let's say so now this is my resultant which has a magnitude of uh, 202.51 and this is making that angle theta which is 11.54 degrees now let's say that we are asked to find this angle theta dash so what will be the angle with the horizontal with this x dash axis is so now we can find theta dash theta dash will be equal to this 20 minus theta so let me write that theta dash is that 20 degree minus theta 20 minus 11.54 degrees this is equal to 8.46 8.46 degrees so now the resultant that we have determined is making 20 degrees with the horizontal line with the x dash or we can say that with the ground now we can find the the our x and our y components or we can say that we can find the components of this resultant with the horizontal and with this vertical so now we we need we have defined the x dash axis we can define our y dash axis as well so this is y dash so this is our positive y dash and this the perpendicular to the inclined surface was our previous positive y axis so this is my previous positive y axis the rx dash will be we can say that rx dash and ry dash so now when we resolve this r into rx dash and ry dash these will be the components let me draw those now this will be our rx dash and this will be our ry dash and now since our x dash is adjacent to that this theta dash so this our x dash is the cos component so we can say that our x is r cos of theta dash and our y dash will be r sine of theta dash so now our magnitude is 202.51 cos of theta dash theta dash is 8.46 similarly our y dash is um 202.51 sine of theta dash 8.46 so 202.51 cos of 8.46 this gives me the rx dash equals to 200 pounds and similarly 202.51 sine of 8.46 gives me 29 ry dash is 29.79 pounds